Sepsis kills more people in the United Kingdom every year than bowel and breast cancer combined. It's difficult to spot. Onset is very rapid, yet early treatment is essential. Gloucestershire Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust is a leader for its implementation of the Sepsis 6 pathway designed to raise awareness, provide prompt and appropriate treatment and save lives. Louise Beckham is a doctor at the Gloucestershire Royal Hospital. In 2007, while working elsewhere in the country, she spent four months in hospital with sepsis and has only just returned to work. She became ill after an apparently minor injury she suffered when she fell from her bike. By the next morning, I really had a very painful thigh. Bad bruise, but nothing exciting. And by the afternoon, I started to feel like I had a virus. Um, a bit sweaty, flu-like symptoms, as in my muscles hurt. And I thought, oh, I must have picked up something from work, etc. Um, paracetamol, painkillers, and went to bed. Um, woke up in the middle of the night, had a temperature about 40. Great, again, it, consistent with the virus. Went back to sleep, and then didn't wake up again for another about 18 hours. Even as a doctor, Louise hadn't realised she was very ill. When she did, Others didn't take it seriously. I phoned for an ambulance, 999, and spoke to the operator. And what I didn't realise is I must have been slurring my speech or not sounding quite right, because um, there, I was asked whether I was drunk or not. I said, you know, and I remember thinking, what on earth are you asking me whether I've drunk alcohol for at this time? You know, it's very inappropriate. The ambulance crew also didn't realise the seriousness of the situation. So even with an infection so serious in your thigh, there's just redness and a bit of swelling. There isn't much to actually see. So a temperature and a faster heart rate wasn't that exciting to them. But then obviously, once they did my blood pressure and they could see it was very low, um, and they did a blood sugar test and that was quite low, then the x-ray showed that I had gas in the tissues, and that's, um, that signifies very extreme um, infection. So as soon as it was diagnosed as an extreme infection, everything happened. You could not ask for any better treatment. The need for early diagnosis and treatment and a lack of awareness of the condition prompted the Gloucestershire Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust to act. It's one of those illnesses that seems not to have caught the attention of the public or even clinical staff. Lung cancers and bowel cancers and heart attacks, that's common, everybody knows about those. Sepsis is equally as serious as those conditions. So it's really important for us to raise the awareness of the whole disease, the difficulties of diagnosis, and the, and the way that we can actually treat these conditions very quickly and really reduce harm in hospitals. And the way they've done that is by implementing the Sepsis 6 pathway. The key first step is identifying patients with severe sepsis. And then sepsis six is the six things we do. The first thing we would give is high flow oxygen. Then we would give uh, a bolus of intravenous fluid, and that could be up to three litres, uh, given quite quickly. Um, the next thing we do is try and take blood cultures. Uh, and we should try and do that before antibiotics are given, uh, but we wouldn't delay any of this treatment whilst trying to obtain those samples. We'd give our intravenous antibiotics and we are now aiming to give those within an hour of having identified severe sepsis and that's one of our key goals. Um, there's some other blood tests to take to help gauge uh, kidney function and looking at the degree of infection. And then the, the sixth thing is to monitor urine output. The biggest challenge really is identifying those patients who don't appear quite so unwell initially and we have to go through a few key steps to try and capture all those patients who might have severe sepsis. And our paramedics do use a, an early warning tool to try and identify cases of sepsis so they can identify to us but also initiate those, uh, some of those six things uh, sort of en route to hospital or in the community. Some patients recover at this stage, others need care in ITU. Eve Ollivant is a senior sister and has worked in intensive care for 10 years. She says two-thirds of the patients she cares for have sepsis. The psychological effects can be massive. 
depending on how long the patient's with us, how sick they are and to what extent they need to be supported by us. Sepsis alone can, can make a, a patient um, hallucinate and be delirious and this happens to all ages of patients. You know, really young people can become quite delirious and hallucinate before they come into the unit. Once they've been here, if they've needed to be on a ventilator or they've needed to be sedated, we will have had to give them lots of drugs to make them better, but also to help us to treat them. The long-term effects of that can be really severe. Um, a lot of patients end up needing psychological follow-up. Um, they develop what we would glean to be sort of a post-traumatic stress disorder. They often suffer with sleep deprivation, um, their sleep rhythms and sleep patterns are completely broken by being here on the unit. It can be a very daunting experience leaving hospital and actually trying to return to normal life. So the really simple things like having relationships with your friends and family again, going back to work, starting to drive, um, long-term physical and psychological effects can manifest themselves for sort of months if to years. I was very confused. So um, I had, um, so I hallucinated things that weren't actually there and I had what you call delusions. So I imagined that I was being tortured or that I'd been kidnapped, all sorts of bizarre things. I had um, what we call um, post-traumatic stress. Well, initially it's an adjustment disorder, so you get stress symptoms. But it went on, it actually went on for a further six months. I was quite, um, had quite a severe reaction. So I had lots of um, dreams and lots of um, quite intrusive flashbacks. Over the last two years we've introduced um, patient, the use of patient diaries, whereby if a patient is going to be um, ventilated for more than 48 to 72 hours, we start a diary for them. As nursing staff we write an entry in it every day. Patients often find that they've lost time, they can't remember huge periods of time in, in, in that journey and the diaries help to fill in those gaps and it helps them to sometimes make sense of some of the hallucinations and the delirious dreams when we explain they might have had a line inserted that day but they've remembered something very different about that so it helps us to kind of join some of the dots for them. If you have a diagnosis of, for example, cancer, um, even for each organ, for example lung cancer or um, bowel cancer, you will have your specialist lead nurse, whereas in sepsis there isn't a specialist um, follow-up nurse and those nurses provide a lot of support to families and to patients and I'd like to see that brought into sepsis because you are affected for a good period of time afterwards. In this trust, in the three years the project's been running, we've transformed clinical care in our emergency departments and in ward areas as well um, from a very low performance, maybe only 20 or 30% of patients were getting the sepsis 6 and now regularly we're in the 90%, so that's almost every single patient that comes to our hospital gets the right treatment every time. The enormous amount of people die from sepsis every single year. That's why we think it's important. That's why we're trying to raise awareness wherever we can for the whole journey, not just what we do in our hospital, but on diagnosis and then follow-up and treatments. It's really important this is a big uh, population of people who get sepsis every single day.